All right, what's up, Cyclone Nation? Welcome to your Cyclone Fanatic halftime show today here on all of our social media platforms uh, from CycloneFanatic.com. We say hello to everybody watching around the world. Before we get into Iowa State and TCU, the Cyclones lead 16-7 to at the break. Want to give a shout out to the folks who make it possible. That's our sponsors. First of all, Fairway Grocery Stores. Y'all know I've gotten into the meat smoking game. We actually had the guy from um, Smoky D's come over and show me some stuff. It was epic. We had these ribs from Fairway, these giant ribs, these juicy ribs. Check it out. There, nobody has a better meat department than Fairway. Uh, Nebraska Furniture Mart and Clive, they've been a great sponsor of ours for almost 10 years now. Phenomenal. Get a better TV. You, you have a garbage TV set up at your house. Never even been to your house, but I guarantee it's garbage, and I guarantee it could be better if you check out our friends at Nebraska Furniture Mart and Clive in Centurion Stone of <laughs> Iowa. I'm not going to say the outside of your house looks like garbage because that might be offensive, but I guarantee it could use a facelift. You need to call my guy Judd at Centurion Stone of Iowa, and he'll take care of you today. Much like the great Brett Meyer is going to take care of us here in today's halftime report. Brett, Iowa State leads TCU by a score of 16-7. to now, offensively, it definitely started out slow, my man, but Iowa State kind of got the ball rolling. It helps when you play off the defense a little bit, but man, it is crazy, Brett, and you know this as a quarterback. When you have a running back who can break open a 75-yard run like that, it really opens things up for your passing game. 100%. I think that, um, yeah, not only does it open it up and make you feel better as an offense, it makes your defense change the way they have to play, which may be more important because, you know, they're going to have to – they're going to have to honor the run game and, and bring more more people to try to defend the run game. And, you know, that does everything and open, it opens up the pass game. So you've seen that. You've seen we've had the play to Acres where we just brought him out of the backfield, um, kind of like a short side, had no receivers on that on that side of the field. That was just scheme. That was a really nice play. I think we knew how they would line up on defense if we came out in that formation and, um, you know, almost went for six, but set up our second touchdown. And, but yeah, I mean, offensively, it's good to see we have a little bit of rhythm. Probably still need to get some guys open a little bit more. You'd like to see guys win some more one-on-one -on -one matchups. But, um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're playing well. We're playing better, and we're playing clean. So, uh, no complaints. We'll get to the defense here momentarily. I want to get more of Brett Meyer's analysis on Iowa State's offense. I, um, I, what do you the, – the first quarter, Brett, Brees Hall didn't get a touch. Now, there was one play designed for him that, that kind of got blown up. Um, Brock Purdy looked sluggish, I thought, in the first quarter. Some accuracy issues. Um, but then, I don't know, he, he's recovered 11 for 15. Uh, notable without Tariq Milton and down two offensive linemen today. What did you see, other than the obvious, a 75-yard run by Brees Hall? But did you, did you start to see Iowa State's offense settling down in that second quarter? Uh, I did. I think it helps. I mean, I know... Um, the first drive of the game, we did okay, but it seemed like we just had a couple three and outs and didn't have the ball a lot. And it was a quick first quarter, but um, yeah, I think they have been settling down. I think we've figured out. I mean, the first few plays of the game, you're kind of feeling them out. And I know that, you know, Gary Patterson and that defense has been there forever. They're not going to change. They're probably a lot like Iowa in mm -hmm. that they're not going to change what they do very much. So you kind of know what you're going to get, but you still come out and you kind of feel them out and try to get in your base formations and see how they're going to to see how they're going to play that. And then you're going to call the game based off of that. So I think that's kind of, we've kind of felt it out. Uh, but yeah, we just need to be balanced on offense more than anything. Um, you know, ideally we'd like to see Brees. He's should be over hundred, 150 yards. And then, you know, Brock's going to be able to, it's been good to have Charlie back clearly. Uh, it was obvious that we're going to get him involved in the game plan early and often. And, you know, hopefully we can scheme out some more, some more plays to get guys open because it, it's our, our receivers are not there yet where they can do it on their own. Landon Akers showed some of that track star speed on his 49-yard reception. Uh, you mentioned Charlie Kohler, four catches for 21 yards, just an average of 5.3 yards per reception. But he really, you can see, is that security blanket for Brock out there. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Brees Hall, uh, the four carries, 76 yards. Let's look at the other side of the football where it's been a dominant performance by the Cyclones. And really, um, you know, Brett, i, I got to go back to the 2005 um, Texas Bowl that you played in the last time I think we He's saw, you, yeah. uh, you know, the Jason Behrman, I think he had like four sacks in the first half of that game, if I'm not mistaken. But Jaquan Bailey mm -hmm. sets the Iowa State sack record today. Uh, three and a half sacks, four tackles for a loss, one forced fumble. 
One of the great uh, defensive performances and a half I can remember in quite some time for an Iowa State Cyclone. Yeah, I, I mean, you could see um, Bailey's just teeing off on their tackles. And we've brought, I, I believe, like three of the four sacks we've had have been just three-man rush. Like it's been just our, you know, our, our three, five, three or whatever running. Like it's not, you know, we're not bringing extra pressure. So that's good to see. You kind of saw a little blurb at the end of the first half where um, old Jerry Kill, the old Minnesota coach, is like a special assistant to the offense. And he was, uh, you could tell he was having a spirited conversation with the OC. Because sometimes you'll have these, I know it's it Sonny Cumbie who's at TCU. He's an air raid guy. And they're not really concerned about anything other than the pitching and catching. I don't know that, you know, they're leaving their tackles on an island. They're clearly struggling. Um, so I don't know what we'll see on offense from TCU coming out to see if they give them some help. Uh, but something needs to happen because, you know, I, I hope they don't change anything because the way they're playing right now, um, you know, Jaquan Bailey and our edge guys are just able to kind of tee off and, and their tackle, they just seem like they're big and slow to get off and we're just taking full advantage right now. Yeah, Matt Downing, uh, the starter for TCU, 11 for 21, Iowa State's defensive line. And Man, I, I'm in love with this Bankston in the middle, this junior college kid. He mm -hmm. is, uh, I mean, you can... You can chalk up a couple of those Bailey sacks to Latrell Bankston, you know, diving in there. And I, I, I don't know how much you've watched Oklahoma today, Brett, but I, you know, I'm not looking ahead. Iowa State has to finish this game out, so don't don't tweet that at me, guys. But I am looking at the Big Twelve right now, and Iowa State's defensive line, even after that first loss of the season, um, they've played six really good quarters of football so far, and and. That's super encouraging going into the, the heart of conference play. Yeah, I think so, too. I mean, defensive line, I mean, you see it with the NFL draft and these teams in the SEC. I mean, you just you need them. It's one of the more important positions on the field. And uh, to be able to have depth and guys who have played a lot of football and, you know, obviously Jaquan Bailey and what he's done and breaking my old teammate and one of my favorite teammates, Sean Moorhead's all-time sack record. Yeah. Just, it shows you the consistency he's been able to – to bring to the field and um i mean geez can't can't k-state's down seven now yeah 35 28 so yeah um, they're making yeah, it interesting make they're making yeah, it interesting the they're norman yep. um okay so well, let's look ahead to the second half i'm you know i what do you want to see offensively i guess brett is where i kind of want to go here because um i i thought we saw two different quarters of iowa state football yeah. On offense, personally, I think like you, I think Iowa State's defense is in a good spot today. Um, I'd like to see Brees Hall get more than four rushing attempts, though. I do know that. What are you thinking? Yeah, I mean, sometimes you can get um, you can be fooled by big plays in the run game to think you're running the ball a lot better than you actually are. Mm -hmm. But if you take away that one run, I mean, we're essentially three rushes for five yards or whatever it is. So no doubt, um, I don't. More consistency out of the run game would be number one. I don't think we're good enough right now through the air, even with Brock Purdy and, you know, and Charlie Kohler and, and Hutchinson. We're just not good enough and clean enough through the air right now uh, to be one dimensional. So we have to have, and we're probably going to need that to win the game, um, you know, to be a, just more consistent in the run game and the schematically to just whether it's uh, another double move, which we scored on, because you know, this is going to be an aggressive secondary for TCU. That's going to be there. Um, but yeah, just find ways to scheme guys open. Uh, whether we go five wide, four wide, whatever the case may be, move Charlie around a little bit. I'm sure we got a couple more gadget plays you know, for the second half. But, you know, this could be one of those games that's close late. And, and you know, our defensive line, with this, with the, uh, whether it's Bankston or, or Bailey, a late sack or strip sack, whatever it is, to seal the game, it could be one of those kind of outcomes. One last thing I would note with the offense, they, it did seem like they were trying to let Brock Purdy use his legs just a little bit. Not a lot of success there, three – I mean, technically three attempts for, for five yards, but I don't know. That seemed to me when I watched the tape back from that Louisiana game, I mean, it, it was really missing at the end of last year. Um, he's not the same quarterback when he's when he's one-dimensional. Did you see Tom Manning trying to loosen him up a little bit? I could see a little bit more of that in the second half. Yeah, I think so. Um, you got to manage it, though. I mean, he's, he's the most important player on our team, so we got to make sure he's on the field. Uh, but, yeah, I think – you know, the run game, that's another way to take advantage of numbers. I mean, you hear them talking about in the spread all the time. That's one of the, the, the main principles is, uh, you know, try to manipulate and take advantage when you have the numbers. And having a quarterback that can run the ball is the easiest way to do that. So, um, yeah, I mean, just find a way to be more consistent in the run game, whether it's Brees Hall, Brock Purdy, whoever it is. We got to find it. 
Got to make your PATs too, man. That's uh, uh <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I turned away. I, I kind of, uh, I turned away from the TV and then kind of glanced back at it and saw it like twelve yards left to the upright. I'm thinking, what? But, yeah, yeah, no, I'm, not good. I mean, he's, he's been pretty good. Yeah, he's, he's been, been fine. He made his field so, goal, yeah, but man, but, like, I just like I I've seen too many of these close games, you know, like, and then it it just comes down to a point where they can kick yeah, whatever. Uh, hopefully, it won't come down to that. But Iowa State. Yeah. Uh, was 16 points there in the second quarter. Cyclones lead TCU 16 to seven. Apparently, um, and Brett, I don't have a TV on here in my office, but apparently, it's getting a little bit nutty in, in Norman right now. Uh, according to, um, yeah, it looks like tailgate and Forsyth is. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get to that. I'm gonna go up and um, get me a cold beer for the second half. Brett, thank you for your time as always. Absolutely. Check out the. Meyer to Blythe podcast weekly on the Cyclone Fanatic Podcast Network. Thanks to Fairway, Centurion Stone, and Nebraska Furniture Mart and Clive. Jared Stansberry and Rob Gray will have the Cyclone Fanatic postgame report coming up exactly two hours after the game on all of our social media platforms. You can check it out there. He's Brett Meyer. My name is Chris Williams signing off. Go Clones in the second half. All right. See you, Chris.